I'm Grace Torrey, and you're listening to That Girl, the podcast. Grab a beverage of choice and settle in, because the new episode is starting now. What's up? It's your girl, Grace Torrey, and wouldn't you know it, I am back with a whole new podcast episode. I don't know if you're a fan of the U.S. version of The Office. I was. And you know that quote that Michael Scott says, like, Half the time, I don't know where a sentence is going. I just hope I find it along the way. That's me with about 70% of my podcast episodes. I just kind of pick something to talk about, like a a broad topic, and hope I figure it out along the way. So today is one of those episodes. I feel like we just haven't caught up in a while. I have so much to tell you guys about. I've learned quite a few life lessons in the process of like all the things that have happened recently. So I kind of just want to chill, talk about all that, and maybe we'll find something profound or exciting or entertaining along the way. So I'm going to address the bunny in the room. If you're on video, YouTube, Spotify, this is Bourbon. This is my little boy Bourbon. He lives in here. You guys know that my bunnies live in my office, but he is on the couch with me. You're probably not going to be able to see him because he's going to be probably sleeping next to me. Braxton's a little bit more active where you do see him like up on the, what's it called, on the cushion behind me where he gets up by my head. But Bourbon usually just like sleeps next to me, so I did want to mention it in case he decides to pop up and be a little bit more active, but for right now, he probably just gonna sleep. Like look at him, I'm pretty sure he's asleep right now, laying next to me, like how I'm holding him. If you can't see, I'm holding him like a child pretty much his head is like on my shoulder and I'm pretty sure he's asleep already he just is way more chill than his brother he doesn't really like the limelight like if you follow any of my pet accounts all of the bunny stuff is majority of the time Braxton because Braxton loves attention he loves people his favorite thing to do is go to Home Depot just so people can like look at him I don't know he is like a rare breed whereas Bourbon is more similar to what bunnies typically act like, where they're really shy, they don't like attention, they kind of just want to be left alone. So that's Bourbon. He just wants to sleep, be left alone, and have tons of food at all times. So, yeah, just wanted to address that. Next order of business, yes, I'm wearing like a tank top, and I don't know what my hair is doing. I just took a quick shower. There's a reason behind that. It is like 95 degrees outside today, and I just got back from the barn, which means I was wearing pants, and it was very hot. I don't know if I told you guys this, but I took Moondance, or I moved Moondance to a lesson barn where she could be used as a lesson horse majority of the time, and then I still get to see her on Sundays. So I got to go ride her today, and it was really fun. I don't think I've had that much fun riding in literally like four years, because the places that I've moved her to, well, they have been amazing facilities. They've been super great. Like, I've been super grateful. They haven't necessarily been eventing barns, which what I do is eventing where we jump and we jump over logs and we do all kinds of stuff. So they didn't have, like, the amenities that we need to have that much fun. So I got to, for the first time forever, make a jump course, jump her through things, just ride her around like crazy. And it was just a really, really fun ride. So I was really excited for that, but both of us were drenched in sweat after, which is how you know it was a good ride, but yeah, that's why. I It's super hot out. I came home, immediately took a shower. I am just like hot, like I'm still trying to cool down because that was intense. It was very intense. It's also 222 right now. Can you see that? If you're watching on video. I'm a big believer in angel numbers. My favorite ones being 222. If you can see, I have a tattoo that says 222, which means that you're on the right path. For me, it means that angel numbers can mean something different to different people. For me, it just means I'm on the right path. It's like a nod to keep doing what you're doing. So I'm really excited about that. But that's not what I wanted to talk about today. I I just, that was an update for you. I think my main thing I wanted to talk about is you potentially could have been putting a lot of effort into something and you're not seeing results and I know for me that's how I have been with a lot of different things in my life I have been giving it my all to the point that I'm losing sleep at night and not just seeing the results that I want like it's still been successful but not as successful as I've hoped in quite a few areas 
Whereas recently, I have just decided to kind of just have fun. Like, I've changed my goal from being, this is going to blow up, I'm going to be so successful, blah, blah, blah. Like, every single goal I've had, every single Etsy business proposal, even the podcast, I have had the mindset of, when this blows up, this is going to be my job, and I'm not really going to have to do the whole 9 to 5 thing anymore because for me personally I know that I'm meant to be an entrepreneur I know I'm meant to do something where I'm my own boss and there's nothing wrong with that it's just like different like you can't exactly apply to be your own boss you know like you have to just either find a way for it to happen or be in the right place at the right time where it does happen and there's nothing you know wrong with you if it doesn't happen immediately so for me, I have a lot of businesses slash entrepreneurial ventures that I've put out there and I've run myself to the point that I am tired, I don't have energy and I give it my all and I sit there and I'm like, why has this not hit the amount of success that I have envisioned for it to? And that, like I said, that success in my head is become a full-time monetary thing and it's not that I don't enjoy it it's not that I don't have fun it's not that I also don't see success in like using the podcast as an example um the people I've reached out to the friendships I've made social media growth things like that like it's not like I don't also see those things as successful it's just that I look at it becoming my full-time thing and I get really stressed out because when I'm doing this on top of other things or when I'm doing other things in addition to this and I'm also working a full-time job and I'm also working a part-time job on top of that I get very discouraged but when I stopped thinking about it that way and I just started doing it as like a fun thing all of a sudden I started growing like crazy so I'm not I'm not saying to stop working hard. I'm just saying to work hard differently. Does that make any sense? Every single time I have stopped looking at something as a thing to check off the to-do list and I've started looking at it as a fun thing that I'm excited to do. I'm excited to film my podcast episodes or I have been for the past like month. Whereas I went through a phase where I started almost looking at it like, oh, I have to check this off my to-do list. I just have to get it done. I'm just gonna write an outline or come up with an idea blurt out what I think about it, upload it, and then move on to the next thing on my to-do list, which is very routine, but I, I kind of took the fun out of it. I kind of took the excitement out of it. Not that I didn't enjoy doing it, but it was very routine. Like, it was very robotic. Whereas now, I was driving home from the barn, and I'm like, man, I'm so excited to film this podcast episode. I am so excited to just talk to you guys and be around you guys, because I feel like I haven't really updated you on anything going on in a while because I have had so many fun things planned like so many fun ideas for episodes planned that I kind of took a break from doing life updates or talking about me or just talking about things going on that I've really learned from so that excitement has just like it's really helped my episodes or my podcast as a whole I think I've definitely grown more recently than I've grown in the past like where I've really just spent so much time like I'm telling you it was very stressful to the point where I was like okay I have to post this many times a day on this platform I have to post this many times on this platform I have to make sure this thumbnail follows this guideline I have to make sure that my episode is this many seconds long because that's what is supposed to be successful I have to make sure my intro doesn't exceed this long I have to make sure this none of that matters you know what matters you because in whatever you are doing, you could be launching a business that you think does not exist yet, that no one has done it. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. Even if no one has done that, someone's done something similar. So you know what's going to make you stand out? Doing it differently. Throwing out the outline and doing whatever makes you you and makes you authentic. If your intro is longer than what people say is successful, but it works for you and it's what you feel is authentic to yourself, then do it. Like I spent so much time researching what is success, what makes you successful, how to do XYZ, how to launch an Etsy, how to make your Etsy 
make income, how to make your podcast successful, how to start a business. I, I mean, I have a master's in business or I got a certificate in, well, I didn't get the certificate in entrepreneurship. I was one class short, but come on, I pretty much got it. Like I just needed that one class. And I've actually thought about going back and taking it, but then I'd have to pay tuition. So like, eh, yeah, you don't really need a certificate in entrepreneurship to be an entrepreneur. So the cons outweigh the pros, unfortunately, but you know what I'm saying. So <laughs> I kind of went off on a tangent there, but what I'm saying is when you are having fun and being authentic to yourself, everything else is going to fall into place. Stop stressing. Nothing on this earth is meant to be a stressful endeavor. Everything on this earth is meant to be fun. Well, okay, that's kind of not true. Obviously not every second of your life is meant to be fun, but what you are spending majority of your time doing, you should not be stressing out. You should not be crying yourself to sleep. You should not be saying, oh my gosh, this sucks right now, but when it is successful, it's gonna be great. Because it's okay to have bad days, but you should be enjoying what you're doing. And like I said, it's not that I wasn't enjoying every single thing I was doing. I pour my heart and soul into all of my ventures because I love it and it makes me happy. But what I am saying is you should not be stressing yourself out over it. You need to step back take a break and remember why you did it in the first place if you feel like you're so stressed out that you cannot enjoy it. So that is what I encourage you to do. That's what I did. I didn't tell you guys, but I did take a week off. I pre-filmed two episodes and took a week off. And in that week, I found kind of why I was motivated to do anything. I took a week off from everything, literally everything. I really didn't go on social media. I mean, I post on my story on the podcast Instagram, but I don't like really, I don't think I really did anything else. If I felt like there was a TikTok I wanted to film, I did. And I still did the animal TikTok because it's fun. And it's just like them, like being silly. Like it's kind of a way I bond with my animals. But I took some time off to kind of fall in love with everything that I do all over again and sit down and say, okay, does everything that I do make me happy? If something doesn't, how can I, one, make it make me happy again, or two, cut it out because it's not what I need anymore. So, yeah, I don't know. But when I came back and I was excited about it again, I have seen my podcast grow so much just in that short amount of time. It's been like two weeks, and I've noticed such a huge, huge difference in my podcast and the growth, like I just check and there's more people subscribing every single day. And I love you so much for that. I just want to take a second to say thank you. I appreciate you. You are so kind, so sweet. I'm so glad you chose to join the community of girlies. We're going to become the best version of ourselves. One way we do that is have this conversation right now where we get serious and say, are we doing this because it's fun or are we putting too much into it? It's possible to put too much into it to the point that you lose yourself and why you started it in the first place. And that is definitely where I was. I lost myself and my interests and what made me happy. And I was just a huge stress ball all the time. And I think I still am a huge stress ball in some aspects, but I at least enjoy what I do every single day at this point. Like, it's positive stress, I guess, if that's one way to put it. So yeah, that is one thing I wanted to talk about. Another thing I want to talk about is I cleaned my house. Not all of it. I, I cleaned the downstairs and then I cleaned the upstairs last week. So, okay, I cleaned the house. Just, I really cleaned the downstairs yesterday and that was the part that was greatly stressing me out, like so much. And I realized while I was doing it that I was moving things around because I was setting myself up for healthy habits and I didn't really realize that the way that I had myself set up or my house set up was enabling me to have unhealthy habits but it was so let me explain what I mean one thing I do that I realized was kind of enabling a negative habit was the dogs had their food and water upstairs in my bedroom like in me and josh's bedroom so i moved everything that's the dogs other than some toys downstairs why is that a big deal you ask because our dogs like to eat with us around so we moved it upstairs because we spend more time upstairs than downstairs originally 
but that was enabling us to have a bad habit where we eat dinner literally in our bed. We don't cook. We have takeout more than we cook. And the dogs eat in there. They get water all over our carpet because they spill their water. There's food everywhere because they munch their food and leave their food everywhere. And it just doesn't look as clean as I would like for it to. There's just no reason for them to have all of that upstairs. Obviously, I'll still put water up there, but they don't need all of that if the goal is for us to just be upstairs when we're like going to bed or doing our night routine, if you're me. Josh doesn't really have one. We're working on it. So that is one way. I also, to kind of take it a step further, cleaned out the fridge. You should be doing that more often if you're not. This is your reminder to clean out your fridge. Anything that's expired has got to go so that we can put new groceries in there and see how much we actually need. I also deep cleaned the kitchen. So I did dishes, scrubbed down the oven, the stove, all of that stuff so that I can cook. I'm so excited to cook. Reorganized everything from like pots and pans to knives and measuring cups and all that so that I can access it easier so that I can cook because not only do I really enjoy cooking as well as baking, it's healthier and it's better for you. So everything I was doing was just enabling me to cook at home and spend more time downstairs instead of just locking myself in my bedroom the minute I get home from work because that's not great. Like that's not awesome. There's so many studies that tell you you should not be getting in your bed to do anything but really sleep. And I broke that rule more times than once. I work in my room, I eat in my room, I watch TV, I do everything in my bed. I use my bed like a couch more than I use it like a bed and that is not healthy. So that's just one example. I also moved the dogs, I guess, okay, maybe I did more than, well, I moved the stuff in the kitchen so that is enabling better habits. I moved our outside furniture into the backyard, power washed all of it and put new couches or new couch cushions on it or outside furniture cushions. I don't know what to call them. And they are summer themed, so I'm gonna have to get some fall ones soon, which is just an example for me to go to Home Goods. Woo! But that's gonna really encourage me to spend more time outside. I love to read. Maybe I'll read outside more. In high school, I used to sit outside on my front porch and read and listen to music till it literally got dark outside every single day every single day I was outside reading and I really miss that so hopefully by doing that it encourages me to go outside more and spend more time outside even if I'm in the backyard I don't even use that furniture it's there and it looks better which makes my mental health better I don't know if you guys are like me but when my house is a mess my mind is a mess so I already feel so much better my mood is so much better I feel so much clearer my head is so much clearer since I have cleaned so I'm really excited about that. I also feel like I can have friends over now because it's clean. Like, I know you guys are like, what do you mean? But I won't have friends over if my house is not clean. So now that the house is clean, we can have friends over and life can be so much better. So it's another reason. I'm just telling you, set yourself up to be successful. I was talking to my mom about this and I was talking to her about Josh. And I said, mom, I am putting things in place so that it's not possible for him to make certain messes. For example, one thing he likes to do is when we eat takeout, he leaves his trash upstairs in the bedroom and I eventually throw it out. <sighs> Sorry Josh, I'm exposing you here a little bit. It drives me crazy. So by doing all the stuff downstairs, eating downstairs, we're not going to have takeout trash upstairs, you know? So that alleviates that issue. I'm working on a better laundry system because he leaves his laundry on the floor. That drives me insane. But I also am not the best about my laundry. I kind of leave it in the bathroom sink and then eventually take it downstairs. So I'm working on a better system for that too. I really need to reorganize my closet, which is going to happen, just not today. So that's what I mean by setting, putting systems in place so that you are not enabling yourself to make bad decisions like if these systems are in place and it's hard for me to make a bad decision then i'll do the better habit if that makes sense like i'm not gonna go out of my way to do something bad but if it's easier for me to do the bad habit like eat in bed i will and i kind of give myself the excuse of well the dogs have to eat and the dogs won't eat unless we're with them because they are weird like they don't like to eat unless we're all there. So think about all the systems in your house, how they're set up, and what you can do to make life a little bit easier for yourself.
I don't know what else to talk about. I feel like there's a thousand other things going on, but I don't really know what to talk about at this moment. So this is a little bit of a shorter episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed catching up with me. Let me know what habit you are going to start enforcing in your house so that you can live a healthier life. I love you guys so, so much. You mean the absolute world to me. If you have a couple seconds, don't forget to leave a rating and review. If you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or leave a like on YouTube, it really does mean the world to me. I'm not even kidding. It helps the podcast so much. Like you guys really, I don't know, you maybe you do understand, but one like, one review, one rating blows it up and so many more people see it and I don't understand the algorithm behind it, but I'm not complaining. So if you have a couple of seconds, it's free and you're supporting my little small business and I love you for it. Also, don't forget to follow on whatever platform you're on. The links to my personal Instagram and TikTok as well as the podcast Instagram and TikTok are down below if you want to check those out. But other than that, if you're watching this on Sunday night, I hope you have a great night. If you're watching this on any other day, I hope you have a great morning, afternoon, or night. I love you so much, and I'll see you in my next podcast episode. Bye, guys. Bye.